Hi there, Claire Kennedy here, and welcome to part two of our short series of videos all about colour. And in part one, we had a look at the colour wheel and about the different colour schemes that artists use in their paintings, like monochromatic, analogous and complementary. And today we're going to have a, a closer look at the complementary colour scheme. It's the one that I find the most intriguing because it really is a case of, of opposites attract. That colour theory has been discussed since Aristotle's time. And it's not just based on art, it's actually based in science. So we're going to attempt to ask the question, why do our eyes find it so satisfying to see complementary colours placed together like the purples and yellows of these beautiful wee flowers? Well, I have to say I'm not very scientifically minded. But my teenage daughter is, and uh, she was trying to explain to me that we see colour as different types of light in the colour spectrum. So I'm going to try to explain to you what she explained to me. So let's try and draw an eye, an eyeball. Okay, there's the optic nerve. Here we've got the iris and pupil looking that way. And the back of the eye here is the retina and we see color or should i say we perceive color through tiny little photoreceptor cells at the back here on the retina um, apparently we've got six or seven million of them in each eye and these are called cones i'll write this down now you get different types of cones which help you to see different colours. So say your eye is looking at an orange square, and I've got some orange paint here, already mixed up. So say for example, your eye is looking at an orange square. This is actually, I thought I'd mixed orange, it's slightly reddy orange actually. And if you want to do an experiment, we can all do this right now if you want. If you just keep looking at this orange square, I'll put a wee dot in the middle. You just keep looking at that little dot in the middle for a few seconds while I'm speaking. So what's happening now is while you're looking at that orange square, the cones in your eyes, which help us perceive the colour orange, are working the hardest. And although we're not aware of it, they're actually becoming slightly fatigued, especially if we continue to stare at this square for a good 20, 30 seconds or so. So let's keep it going for another couple of seconds. That's probably enough. So if we now then quickly look at this blank white page here, what do you see? Did you see a blue square? <laughs> I hope you did, because that's what you're meant to see. <laughs> I think I did actually when I was doing it there. You saw the complementary color, which is, which is blue. Actually, you probably saw sort of blue green because it's actually more like a red orange color. Now, this is because the cones which help us see orange are temporarily fatigued. So I suppose the cones are a wee bit imbalanced. So that means for a few seconds afterwards, we see the spectrum, but minus a wee bit of the orange because the cones are fatigued. And then the brain processes that as blue, the contemporary color, the, sorry, the complementary color. Now, I really don't claim to understand this from a scientific point of view <laughs> at all. But I really do find it fascinating. Um, but what I do take away from it, from an artistic point of view, and this isn't scientific, this is just my own personal takeaway, is that our brain kind of wants to find balance. So if there's a lot of blue, for example, our brains kind of want to see a pop of something kind of orangey to balance out. So you see this a lot in interior design. And I've got a magazine here showing a kitchen. And these orange lights, they look really good because your eye just kind of really wants to see that amongst all this navy blue. I mean, it's a beautiful kitchen, but to me, the orange lights really provide that balance and kind of complete the picture. Um, I sort of noticed the page before this as well. There's a bathroom, yep. Yeah. This bathroom, it's a beautiful bathroom, but the photographer has very deliberately draped a red orange colored tile over the side of the bath 
which just suddenly just makes it a lot more aesthetically pleasing. And interior designers, graphic designers, photographers, artists, they all know this and you see examples everywhere. I mean, you can walk, have to walk down the high street and you see quite a lot of shop fronts. I've got this sort of complementary color scheme. And even a quick look through my um, kitchen and bathroom cupboard uh, shows examples as well. So I'm going to show you a few things here that I grabbed out the cupboard this morning. So here you've got a packet of rice that is, you know, a perfect example of your yellow, orange, and blue, violet. Um, what else do I have? Ibuprofen, again, perfect example of a sort of blue, green, and red, orange. Um, another blue and orange. Um, we have some chilli sauce that I grabbed from the fridge with the purple and the yellow. Um, even toilet paper, I noticed. <laughs> um, you've got this little golden coloured puppy and they wanted this golden puppy to stand out as it's the sort of brand image. So how do you make gold or yellow stand out? Well, you surround it with its complementary colour, which is purple. So filmmakers also use this a lot. They use a, lot, uh, a complementary colour scheme a lot. And I can't show clips, but um, I don't know if you know the film Amelie, for example. Not only is it a really great film, I love it, but almost every scene is a play on the complementary colours of red and green. And by total chance, actually, last night I happened to watch television and um, I turned on television and, and this film called The Shape of Water came on, the two, 2017 film. Um, and I was watching it and, and I was already thinking about, you know, what I was going to be including in this uh, this video, which I was, record, was going to record the next morning. And this film, The Shape of Water, came on and it is another example of a really beautiful complementary colour palette all the way through it. Really quite fascinating. And both of these films are actually are probably quite obvious examples, um, but you do see it in TV and film in more subtle ways all the time. For example, I don't know if you're familiar with the Scottish crime drama Shetland. I recently watched the latest series and I was really struck by the colour palette. There were a lot of sort of muted, desaturated sort of russet tones like this here. Um, and the lead character, the main character, almost always was wearing some article, article of clothing, like a scarf, or a jumper or something, which was a very saturated blue colour, which really made her stand out uh, and be the focal point of the scene. So bring this all back together to art and painting. It's definitely something to be aware of when choosing colour scheme for your painting. And in the previous video, if you watch a previous video, uh, we did look at some examples of how some artists in the past, I think we looked at like a Holby, a Holbein and um, Van Eyck, among others. Uh, we looked at some examples of their work where they were using a complementary colour scheme. Um, but one artist I think who was quite known for it was Van Gogh. And I've got some, get rid of these, get rid of these things here. Um, and I've got a few exa postcard examples of Van Gogh's work some of his more famous work. Um, and you can see he's using a beautiful complementary colour scheme here, mostly sort of um, the yellow, orange, blue, violet colour scheme. And he also, as well as that particular colour scheme, he also quite often used reds and greens together. Even this one, it's kind of um, muted, but it's still reds and greens. And it's definitely, um, I think that's maybe one of the reasons why so many of us are, are, are so attracted to Van Gogh paintings. I think it's his use of colour, and in particular, his use of complementary colour, which really attracts us. So definitely something to think, something to think about when you're choosing your own colour palettes. Um, I, also, I do quite like using a complementary colour. Um, I quite like using uh, it in my underpainting. So for example, if I know my painting is going to be a predominantly blue painting, 
then often I'll, I'll start off by using burnt siennas, rust colours, so that, and then paint on top, the blue on top, so that um, it will be peeking through the final painting, provide a little bit of warmth. Um, but there's various ways which you can, lots of different ways which you can use them. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this little journey into complementary colours, and I uh, hope you have fun spotting them themselves when you're out about. Um, next time we'll be sticking with complementary colours, but I'll do a little colour mixing demo and I'll show you how by mixing them together, you can make a whole array of really beautiful neutrals. So I hope to see you then. In the meantime, thank you for watching.